All right, guys, let's take a look at the new Seiko Captain Willard. I mean, that's what everyone's calling it because of its, you know, role in the Apocalypse Now movie. But really what we're looking at here, part number SBDC109. This is the JDM Made in Japan one. I'm not sure. I think even the U.S. ones could potentially say Made in Japan on them just because of everything's going on with the world market. But the USA part numbers are going to be SPB151 and 153 for the green variant because there's a green variant on this that I would like to see eventually on the channel as well because it looks stunning as well. But the black one's definitely the safe one, but the green one looks really cool too. There's no doubt about it. So what we have here is a 6R35, you know, that's their new movement. Still, you know, the specs on it as far as the timekeeping are not, you know, amazing. Plus 25 to minus 15. I did wind this one up, threw it on the time grapher. I'm getting plus 2 seconds, so I'm not mad about that at all. But it's going to deviate depending on what position you hold it at. There's also a product on this, a proprietary product from Seiko called Dia Shield. So that is just a protective layer on there to help it be a little more scratch resistant. Um, there's mixed reviews out there on that product as well. But the uh, big thing on this is it actually has a sapphire crystal. So that's really cool. And, you know, the case, basically a cushion case, much like a turtle or any, any other Seiko out there. That's, you know, what we're really used to, the ones that we really gravitate towards anyway. But um, it's definitely not a turtle. The sizes alone, I'm going to give you right now, will dictate that. But on top of that, you know, the crown guards and all that stuff. It's definitely more of a throwback to the original 6105 Seiko. And uh, they they nailed it as far as I'm concerned. So 42.5 millimeter case from my measurement. And it kind of like peaks out. It comes to a little peak on the sides. So I got the widest part that I could find excluding the crown guards. 42.5 lug to lug and I again I measured all the way to the ends here 45.8 millimeter you can see you have drilled lug holes here for easy easy uh, strap change and 13.3 thick that's to that slightly domed sapphire and you can see it has a heavy chamfer on the edge there leading up to the bezel insert which as far as I can tell that bezel insert is aluminum which is fine uh, I think that ties in better to the overall look of the watch so 13.3 thick, 20 millimeter lug width here. So I like that much more than I like the 22 um, that uh, they could have easily went with just because of what they've done in the past. But I'm glad they went with the 20. And then the bracelet tapers down to an 18. A really well done bracelet, actually. It's a pin and collar, which I'll show you in a moment how to size that. But um, it's it's just a nice, comfortable bracelet. There's, you know... It's pretty smooth. It's all brushed, polished on the sides. It's clean. Um, the clasp, although improved, I still think there's room for further improvement, but it is definitely nicer than what you would see, like, say, on a SKX or, or even some of the uh, newer bracelets. But um, you got the milled out center section, and then even the, the clasp body here with the four micro adjusts and the double pushers almost gives you a feel that it's a milled clasp, although it's not. It's definitely stamped. But uh, the finishing on it, the brushing and the polish and the angles and everything, gives it more of a feel that it's actually milled. So pretty thin, and then you have a longer fold-over tab here with the Seiko laser engraved in there. So, And then you have that standard Seiko dive extension. Um, I think I could do without that, but I get it. It's a dive watch. It's ISO certified, 200 meter water resist. So they're going to go ahead and keep that on there. Uh, nice screw down case back as you can see there no killer special information on there it's not special or limited edition or anything like that so we're going to see plenty of these we just have to wait i know there's an influx high popularity with this thing right now so the supply and demand on it is going to be pretty wild in the beginning you know the jdm releases are getting gobbled up they're going to start landing in the u.s market under those spb numbers you can certainly wait on those the price tags um it, around the $1,300 mark um, and if you wait for the USA authorized dealers that's where you're maybe going to get your discount you know when you're buying it from the JDM market you're pretty much going to pay full retail plus I got nicked with the uh, import tax on this thing for like $123, $125 or something like that so that bumps the price up over one or uh, $1,400 so be careful of that 
maybe uh, the fear of missing out, maybe just suppress that a little bit and just wait. You're not going to miss out. They're going to land in the U.S. authorized dealers. Just uh, maybe hold out a little bit and pick one up there. But if you have to be, you know, the, the uh, early ones on the block to have your Captain Willard, by all means, do what I did. Order one up, even though I already sold this one. So, Jerry, I will be sending this out to you as soon as I can. Um, all right, what did we talk about here? We got the clasp. I like the clasp. Love the case shape. 120 click on the bezel. Very clean, smooth, Seiko type action. Does it line up? Big question. Does it line up? Well, no, not really. Um, I can get it like half click right in there. So, I mean, that could be adjusted, I'm sure. But uh, it's stiff enough that you can put it there or you can just turn your OCD down a little bit and probably get it to click all the way and just wear it. It's pretty dang close, really. But for the sake of this video, I am going to center it because it will probably drive me crazy. And I know it will drive some of you guys crazy. So the bezel on it actually has, let's zoom in a bit and let's take a look at some of the finishing. The bezel on it has some of the best Seiko coin edge I have ever seen. And it's on a little bit of an angle. So it's super easy to grip. Very good traction on it. Check out that, look at that belly on that thing, how much it bellies out. That is phenomenal. That is a nice sharp angle and I, it's just phenomenally done. And then of course on the crown side, you can see it also has that same shape, but they have the integrated crown guards with a relief cut on the back side to operate the crown, which the crown is 6.5 millimeter. Uh, which is an adequate size for the real estate that it has, but you have the relief cut, it's super easy to operate still. No problem, nice little pop to it. You're gonna be able to wind in that first position. And then of course you can pull it out. First position is gonna give you your date set. You can pull it all the way out and it's gonna hack the movement, stop that second hand so you can set it more precisely to however you want. Very little crown wobble on that guy. Go ahead and push it in and go ahead and screw it in. I didn't have to back spin the line up on that time but it's always a good idea to do with some of these mass-produced watches is to maybe backspin while you're pushing in so you can feel it drop into that thread and then go forward just to be on the safe side so let's zoom back in on this dial you can see excellent polished handset and i'm super super digging that seconds hand with the uh, stoplight type structure with the red dot and then the uh, loomed triangle out at the end I'm really digging that. I like that. It's a nice touch. Simple date cutout at 3 o'clock. You have applied indices or applied style indices. I'm not sure if they're actually applied. These ones actually might be applied. I don't know if you'd be able to press those up. I'm not 100% sure. Thick, heavy application of loom. You can see there how it rises up above the indices. In the otherwise clean, flat black dial Seiko printed. The Prospex X Automatic Diver 200. Other than that, it's uh, very clean and classic looking. No issues there. Let's pop this guy on wrist so we can get a clean wrist shot. I did, like I said, I did size this. I'm going to change it up a bit. I'm not 100% happy with the way the clasp plays. So I'm actually probably going to add a link on this side and take a link out over here. Shifting the clasp over here, that's how I usually wear my monsters with the dive extension. And I push that curve, that natural curve, over towards the wrist a little bit more. So you can see on my 7.25 inch wrist, absolute perfection i love it this this is, is gonna wear on such a smaller wrist no problem with that just under 46 lug to lug and then that cushion case yeah this is easily down into the six and a half or even sub six and a half inch size wrist is still going to be able to wear this watch no problem so there is the look at that and i did kind of you know guessed in a little bit here the skx just for a little bit of size reference there it's very similar in size other than it's you know bellied out more so yes it is wider but because of that sharp angle on there it's gonna wear more like to me it almost feels like a flattened out skx meaning that it feels like it's been pushed in flattened out a little bit and then spread out width wise a little bit but still bellied and rolled up. So if that makes sense, that's about how it feels on wrist. It feels like a, a more, um, how do I say this, a better positioned SKX on your wrist. Sometimes the SKX feels a little top heavy. The Willard doesn't feel top heavy. It feels, you know, a little more surface area and planted. It just feels 
definitely better on wrist. So you, there's also um, going to be some really good strap options for this. Of course, you can go aftermarket or even the factory Seiko silicone ones are going to fit on there because I think the green one actually comes with the silicone strap instead of the bracelet. I could be wrong on that. But, you know, um, you could put a, uh, you know, FKM or vulcanized rubber strap on there and it would be, it would just be heaven. It would be perfect in the summertime. I'm a bracelet guy. I dig it on the bracelet, but this on a rubber strap would be killer too. So let's kill the lights and check out that spectacular loom. I know I went crazy long on this, but I do also have to say, um, I picked this up from Saya. I'm not sponsored by him or anything like that or, or helped out by him or anything like that. And I did already sell this to my buddy Jerry, um, but I'm going to hold it back a little bit because my other good friend Homer actually has the SLA uh, version, the limited version. So there's the loom shot anyway, but I got to look at my notes. So I'll turn it. So Homer has the SLA 033, which back in the day, that thing sold for over $4,000, which is very similar to this watch, but it has a better movement and everything like that. So Homer's sending that in, and I want to do a side-by-side -side comparison because I think uh, that'll be very fun and interesting to do to see a extremely, in comparison, an extremely affordable option to the old or the, you know, previously released SLA 033. You know, this one landing at around 1300 By no means is that a cheap or inexpensive or affordable watch. I get it. That is an expensive watch, period. Uh, but in comparison to the SLA, it is a deal. So hopefully I'll get that video out as soon as Homer can get that watch over to me. Thanks, everybody, for helping out and supporting the channel. And I will catch you guys on the next vid.